All right. I'm guessing y'all know by whatever thumbnail I end up making, or by the title of this video, what game I have in right now. Assuming you don't remember it from your childhood. I'm going to be kicking that nostalgia nerve for a little while, I think. Now, my original plan was to demonstrate transferring over um, Pokemon and full boxes from your PC into the storage on the N64 game pack itself. But, um, as you can see, my yellow is dead. The battery finally died. The, it was the original battery. It still had a charge on it a few months ago because it was still maintaining a save file. But now, not so much. So if you didn't know, um, old Game Boy games and a lot of N64 games actually have a small uh, watch battery inside them that they use to maintain a save file. And that battery can last for generally 10 to 12 years, but sometimes there are kind of ways to charge them to where they'll last longer, but charging them is kind of a trick and it's not guaranteed and you still don't really know exactly how long the battery will last charging it. There are some other videos I've seen online about how to charge them. So I'm going to go through and show you how I would have transferred everything over and saved it to the game, the uh, game cartridge for the N64 to Pokemon Stadium. But I'm not actually going to do that. I'm actually going to wipe any save data on this thing. Because there isn't any. All Game Boy items, Pokemon transferred to the pack will be lost. Are you sure? Yes. Um, Pokemon Stadium and Stadium 2 and I believe Pokemon Snap, none of those take batteries. Um, I did take them apart and look. I do have acquired a soldering iron kit and new batteries, so I do plan on changing the batteries out shortly. I was going to do it a while ago and just never got to it, and I'm kind of kicking myself in the ass for that. But you would go over to the research lab over here. And in here, there's a few things. There's more things on Pokemon Stadium 2, but I figure since I'm... At Dealing with first gen games, I'll deal with first gen Pokemon Stadium. So here you have the PC, and in this you can trade between all your different cartridges and be able to just trade with yourself without having to have two Game Boys, so that's a bonus for people like me. This is to change around the Game Boy cartridges involved. And this is a full Pokedex that uses the Pokedex you actually have. So it acts just like the Pokedex in-game. And then this box over here. This is what allows you to transfer just complete boxes. I'd be able to move, you know, box one, box two, completely over into the Game Boy, or into the N64. I don't remember exactly, I think there's more than 12 boxes, honestly, but since I don't have any in there, it won't let me, like, move. Because I have nothing in there. Yeah, I'm trying, it won't let me click anything. Yep, I tried the joystick too. Won't let me because there's nothing in there. 64 boxes. No, there's only 12. Um, there might be more in um, Stadium 2. I don't remember. But still, on the N64, 12 boxes of 20. You can hold a lot of Pokemon on here. So if you are wanting to play the old school games and let's say you're a breeder... You know, you like breeding, that's what you do. You have a lot of extra storage space here to try to breed those, you know, perfect stats, perfect move sets, trying to breed specifically for a shiny. 
which you can transfer all the way up using different handheld game consoles. I don't know how exactly to do that, but I know you can. Um, so I'm just going to show off around Pokemon Stadium for this episode, and this will be like episode one of a lot of my retro shit. Let me grab a drink, there's going to be some ice jingling. Alright, so stadium right here where you do all your battles. There's the Petite Cup, Poke Cup, Pika Cup, and the Prime Cup, which is the big one. And I do believe there are different levels, and there's all kinds of rules, you know, qualifying Pokemon. So there's only 45 Pokemon out of the first 151, which can even be involved in this. Um, enter with six, choose three out of the six. Max went through Pokemon, max height, max weight. <clears throat> Unevolved only. No two Pokemon sleep or frozen. Mew can't attend. Damn you. Yeah, continue for a perfect match. No self-destruct. And then registration. You can go through and register Pokemon from your game to use, or you can build a team of rentals. And there shouldn't be any registered teams because I have not done it. So back. Battle. What will it tell me to do? Oh, it says I have no registered sets, so. I'm not even gonna tinker with that anymore at this point. I'll end up doing like a video when I start doing these. I just don't know for sure when I'm going to be doing that. Um, and then you have the Hall of Fame, which will show off Pokemon that are put in the Hall of Fame that have, you know, beaten it. Right? Yeah, tournament winners. Uh, mini games. Mini games were actually something that were great. <laughs> I have it set for computer versus computer versus computer. I'll go ahead and join normal just to show off the games. Magikarp Splash, Clefairy Says, Rattata Racing, Sushi, Thundering Dynamo, Snow War, Hoop Hurl, Rock Hard, and Dig Dig Dig. I will end up doing a couple videos going over mini games and playing some of them if not all of them, depending on how I feel. Game Boy Tower, this is where you go to play the Game Boy cartridge that is inserted in the transfer pack. Uh, free battle, battle with friends, or, piece, or computer battlers. Gym Leader Castle, um, defeating this all the way up, it goes through all the gym leaders. I think there's, start, there's uh, junior trainers along with them, I don't remember. We'll figure that out when we get there. But getting all the way through that unlocks the night mode, which is kind of like the harder mode. It also unlocks the duo tower, I believe, which plays the Game Boy cartridge at double speed. And then I think beating it again will get it to Dodrio tower, which will play the Game Boy pack at triple speed, which can be nice if you are recording for YouTube or if you just don't want to go through all the hassle. But it does have a slightly different rule set and whatnot. But that is going to wrap up this little starter video for what I am planning on doing here shortly. I may or may not do a video on how to change out the batteries and the cartridges themselves. I'm honestly kind of afraid to do that because I'm using all, like, original game cartridges, original N64 controllers, transfer packs. They're really hard to get, and I don't think, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not refurbished, uh, remanufactured, that's the one. I do not believe remanufactured carton cartridges, you know, the cheap knockoffs, will actually interact with each other properly as far as trading Pokemon or interacting with Pokemon Stadium or Stadium 2 
um, from what I have seen online, reproductions, there we go, reproductions, um, do not work with the original cartridges in the same capacity. But anyone who watched this, um, I would like to thank y'all. Like, comment, sub for you know constructive criticism. I don't give a shit what you do. But hopefully I will be getting these batteries taken care of soon and I can start a video series. I do have red, blue, and yellow, but I don't really see the point in doing videos on all three because red and blue are essentially the exact same game. Um, yellow is a little different. It's got a little better sprites and a bit different animations and stuff like that. The, some of the Pokemon level differently. Um, some of the gyms have different Pokemon because yellow is actually made to follow the show. I'm actually rambling right now. I will be re-mentioning all of this when I do the actual videos on the game. I will be using any exploit or in-game mechanic that I can during these. Like, I will be starting, you know, Pokemon Red with all three starters. Because there is an exploit that I can do having Pokemon Stadium. Um, I will be catching Mew. Because there is a exploit in the coding to catch Mew around Cerulean City. So I will be going over that when I get to it. But again, thanks anybody who made it this far. I know my views are probably only going to be like one or two people. Maybe, you know, five, ten years down the line, somebody's going to stumble across, stumble across this video having a nostalgia trip. And hopefully you enjoy it. Um, but thank you all.